I have finally solved the keyboard issue with the FTM 500. Stick around and we'll get right to it. Real quick before we get going, I've got to give a shout out to these guys. They're my latest patrons over on Patreon. If you'd like to help support the channel, I'll leave a link to Patreon down in the description below. So if you've been following the channel for very long, you'll probably know that I absolutely hate the keyboard choice that Yezu went with for the FTM 500. The ABCDE keyboard makes absolutely zero sense to me. QWERTY is what I'm familiar with. And I'm kind of curious, am I just wrong on this? Are there other countries in, the, in this world that use a keyboard layout of ABCDE? I'm really curious because this is absolutely uh, insane to me why they would make this choice. And I'm trying to figure out maybe the rest of the country uses a keyboard that's laid out ABCDE. I don't know. Anyway, what I have actually done is connected the MobiLink TNC to the radio, and then I'm able to use my phone to get messages in and out of the radio. Let me show you guys exactly how I'm making that happen. All right, so today I'm going to be using an application on the iPhone called Pocket Packet. You can also use this with APRS.fi. However, you can't strictly run over RF with APRS.fi. Some of its packets will go out over the cellular internet connection, provided you have one. Now, if you don't have one, everything will work with just RF using APRS.fi. If you're a Droid user, then check out APRS Droid instead. Let's take a quick look at how to get this configured. I'm going to go into the settings. Make sure you've got your call sign right at the top. I enabled tracking location with that second option right there turned on. You'll notice that I also have report altitude uh, enabled. And then the symbol I chose was the truck. Now let's talk about two things here real quick. I chose the exact same call sign and SSID as the FTM 500 is set to. Same thing with the symbol being set to the truck. Uh, that is exactly what the FTM 500 is set to. So if either of these beacons, be it the application on the phone or the radio itself, it will look pretty much identical on the map for someone else looking at this information, or it'll show up exactly the same on someone else's radio. Now the comment I have set is pocket packet over RF, and then I've got WinLink and AP Mail out there beside it just so I can get alerted to if I have any messages. For the DigiPeter path, I've got mine set to wide 11 and wide 2-1. And then I just set my TX interval to every 15 minutes. Next, you've got some various options that you can set depending on how you want to see it. I like to see the large symbols on my map, so I've enabled that. And then for map style, you've got several different options that you can set there as well. Message groups, you can define message groups. I've got five defined, but this really doesn't matter in the app, assuming you're connected to an APRS radio, as what's set on the radio is going to take precedence. The APRS IS connection, I have left disabled because I don't want anything going out over my cellular connection. I only want packets being sent and received over RF with the radio. Scrolling down to the next section, you'll see Bluetooth TNC. And this is where we're going to set up the MobiLink TNC. If you haven't paired it with your device before, you're going to click device right there and then select your particular version of the MobiLink. Once you've got the MobiLink selected, let's go ahead and enable that by just turning on this switch here. Nothing else is really gonna matter because uh, the options below are for audio modem, where you're using Vox to trigger the PTT. I don't recommend that for APRS. It's much preferred to use a Bluetooth TNC. Next, I want to go ahead and click on packet flow. So as you can see, we do have some packets already coming into that packet flow. Let's go ahead and send a beacon with the Kenwood D75 and watch that show up as well. And there you can see that beacon come in. All right, let's check out messaging and the way the QWERTY keyboard comes into play now. So we'll send a quick message that just says for video. Let's go ahead and press the send button on the Kenwood radio. And you can see it immediately showed up 
on the phone as a message. You'll notice that message indicator right up there on the top right corner. And you can see that same message has shown up on the radio. So now you have a choice of replying from the radio or replying from the phone. If we simply tap on that indicator up there in the top right corner, it'll bring up a list of messages. Let's go ahead and click on that first one that I just sent that says for video. And we can simply hit the reply button right here. Now we can click on the message and type out our message with a nice QWERTY keyboard. Once you've composed your message, just click the done button and then we can click send. Now you can request an acknowledgement from the station you're sending it to if you'd like to by simply enabling that button right there. Let's go ahead and click the send button on the phone. That'll go out over the air with the radio and we got our message right there on the HT. So let's take a look at one more example here before we wrap this up. Back on the messaging screen in the bottom right hand corner, I'm going to click on Compose. For the call sign, let's use WXBOT this time. I'm going to say Done after I've typed that in. Let's click on the message and let's say Today so we can get today's weather report. Again, I'm going to click Done right there. This time, I'm not going to request an acknowledgement. I'm just going to press the Send button in the top right-hand corner. That'll go out over RF with the radio. And if we give it just a second, the message comes right back into us. Now, again, this is showing up both on the phone and on the radio. So I've got the option of reading it or replying to it in either uh, on either device, whichever way is most convenient for you. To me, being able to use a QWERTY keyboard and my phone is much easier than using the Goofy keyboard on the FTM 500. Now, if you decide to set this up with your FTM 500, you will need a couple of cables in addition to the MobiLink TNC. You will need the MobiLink adapter cable, uh, specific for the TNC, which currently is sold out, but hopefully those will be available again soon. In addition to that, you're going to need a Yezu, I believe it's a CT-164 cable. Uh, that will adapt it from a 10-pin connector on the radio to the 6-pin connector that the MobiLink needs to be able to work with. I'll leave links to all of that down in the description below. So this finally solves my issues with the FTM 500. Should we have to add a $150 TNC and a phone to fix what Yezu won't seem to fix? Well, no, we shouldn't have to do that. But if they're not going to fix that QWERTY keyboard, this at least gives me a workaround that makes it a more enjoyable experience going forward. So I simply mount the telephone to my dashboard and if a message comes in, I can quickly reply to it. And all of it's happening over RF. If you found today's information helpful, be sure to give us a thumbs up before you head off. We will see you guys on the next one. Until then, 7-3.